Right, I'll cut that bit out. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. Uh, finally, finally get to meet Ebony Bridges. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. We've texted a few times on Twitter to arrange an interview and stuff like that. So uh, it's finally nice to meet you. How's things? Yes, uh, good, thanks. You know, Saturday night over here in anticipation for the fights tomorrow. So, um, you know, looking to get an early night because I've got to get up at 4 a.m. for the matchroom card. And then um, then there's the showtime boxing during the day. So, I'm good. That's good. Well, it's, it's Saturday morning here, so for us, it's a Saturday night fight. Yeah. So, lucky us. Yep. Um, before we talk about that card, let's talk about yourself, Ebony. I mean, you're making some, you're making a lot of, a lot of noise with fans <laughs> on Twitter. Um, your Twitter yeah. following's gone up and up and up and up and up and up and up. It's uh, you're really starting to make some noise. But for you, in terms of the boxing thing, we've seen boxing's coming back now. Have you got a date yeah. yet lined up or anything along them lines? Have you heard anything? Yeah, it's not coming back in Australia. There's only one state that's doing it in Australia, and Australia is in every border is closed in Australia, so you can't leave your state. So unless you're in that state, you can't get a fight. So. Um, I was, I did have a fight booked for the 12th of September. Obviously that's not happening now because we've got our second wave and our second wave is a lot worse, a lot worse than our first wave. So now they're really, really strict um, with travel, quarantine, um, crowds and stuff like that. So I don't think anything's going to happen in my state. Um, there's talk of a fight in November, but um, again, in another state, and I just have to, it just depends on what's happening at that time, because mm. at the moment, for me to fly into another state, after have to quarantine for two weeks, I have to pay $3,000 out of my own pockets, I have to spend two weeks in, an, in a hotel with guards and police, making sure I don't leave my room, then, well, I fight, you know what I mean, and then I fly back, and then I fly back from that state, and I've got to do quarantine in my state again, Another three thousand dollars, another fourteen days mandatory quarantine in a hotel with police. Make sure you don't leave the room, you know, like shitty food. Like, I'm just, it just depends, man. Like, and I'm telling you, like the promoters here, they're not going to pay for that. Mm. So, what am I going to like spend all my money, all my purse plus more on quarantine just to have a fight? Like, I'm not that. I don't know, you know. What's the three thousand? What's the three thousand dollars for quarantine? Three. Three thousand dollars, yeah, to stay in a hotel for two weeks, mandatory. Wow, man, the, the, the government's not paying for it. So, in Australia, like, if you fly in from overseas or you fly in and out of the, each state or drive, even you have to quarantine, mandatory quarantine in a hotel room. And there's specific they're like quarantine ho hotel rooms with um like army, police, mm. and you stay in your room and you're not allowed to leave your room. Like Sounds there's like people prison. in the hallways. It is, it is. And you've got to pay $3,000 for it and you can only, you can't go out. If you don't have a window or a balcony at your hotel, then, um, mm. then yeah, like it's like you're stuck in a, you got no fresh air for two weeks. It's, it's pretty full on. Like, I mean, and you got to pay for it. Like, um, like they were paying for it. And I think people were just not taking for a while. People were just not caring so much. Mm -hmm. um, but now that you have to pay for it, people aren't traveling. It's stopping people from traveling. Because before it was like, oh, I'll just travel, like, mm. it's all right. Like, I'll just do ice. I'll, the the, um, the government will pay for it. And, like, my friend's coming home from Sweden. And, um, yeah, she's booked her flights and everything like that. And then, like, a couple of days later, that this law came in that you have to pay for your own quarantine. And um, now she, when she arrives, she has to go straight into quarantine. And that's from the airports. From the airports, they take you in, like, a bus to the quarantine the hotels. Oh. It's full on. Gee, that's so... Crazy. I mean, is it worth it? I don't know. Like, oh, well, you know, can you get I'm out? Gonna, can you come I, to the UK? Can you come to the UK? Maybe get yeah. out? I mean, I think if I came to the UK, I probably wouldn't have to do pay for a quarantine. I probably just have to do some, um, you know, home isolation. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, like they're they're in this state, in this particular state where they want me to fight. Um, at the moment, they're in full lockdown. They're in curfews. Um, you know, they've got police in the street and like drones out, making sure that you know they're not leaving people. Like living in houses and stuff, so they're full on. Like it's just, it's it's full on, oh, uh, because people with COVID, because people actually people with COVID have have left, like have gone out and spread it. Like people that mm. known they have COVID, they don't stay home. So mm. now they're just being really tricky. And and it's because our first wave, we only we only had a hundred and two deaths in like five months. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty good. And then obviously everyone kind of slacked off a bit. And then now the second wave, in the first three or four weeks, we had like three four hundred deaths. Right. So, considering, you know, in three or four weeks, we, like, quadrupled our deaths that we did in five months, 
you know, it's it's not not good. So I know you guys haven't finished your first wave yet, so be prepared for that. Well, don't don't say that. I, I just want to get back to talking boxing. I don't want to think about that. So uh, it's it's because a scary thought, definitely. So I must be frustrated. Is it frustrating for you, or are you happy the fact that you're you can see boxing on TV again? You're watching fights, but oh it's, it's yeah, because you you don't get to fight, but there is boxing. There's live boxing again, which is again, it's like a yeah yeah oh well I, like as you know like i'm a huge fan of boxing like mm. i don't just box like i love boxing i'm a proper fan like um i don't just kind of follow it a little bit like i'm you know i've always been a big fan so i'm loving the boxing zone giving me something to talk about giving me like you know like it gets i get excited over it um but yeah it's frustrating that um i'm not able to fight and especially because i've been working so hard and my sparring man like my sparring is this off the chart at the moment like I had a sparring session, so it was like, it was crazy. I was like, who even am I? Like, I was like, fuck, I need to get in a ring. Like, it's crazy. Like, and to think like, you know, that I'm not going to be able to show it off or, or use it anytime soon um, is, it is demotivating a little bit or disappointing or, or frustrating, I should say. Um, because yeah, like, I just want to get in there and fucking punch heads. Like, <laughs> you know, I want to do what I love to do, like, you know. And um, obviously the UK, you know, like I, I'm, I'm loving the UK. I mean, the longer I'm out, here, you know, it's only going to get better. I'm only going to get more popular and I'm only going to build my fan base even more. So when I get there, it's going to be even more of a reception. But I am a little bit impatient, but I'm a bit like, come on, I just want to get there and like, you know, get amongst it and stuff. Um, I've talked to my managers about um, going over to America or the UK. They're obviously from America, but um, they said it's not really probably... Um, in America, it's going to be a lot harder to get, you know, like get on a fight in America, um, just because obviously less fights and um, a huge pool of fighters, and um, it's still pretty dangerous over there. You just don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, if anything, uh, you know, UK would probably be a better option for me. Like, there's a few girls, there's a few girls, known girls in my weight class in the UK that you know are probable fights, um, where the you know the US not not real prominent names, if you know what I mean. Like yeah. maybe kind of some fights, but not, not the kind of fights that I want, you know, uh, Mexico, you know, we've got Mexicans and stuff as well, but yeah, it just, yes, it, it sucks, but everything happens for a reason and, and it's all meant to happen. And, um, you know, when it comes time, I'll be more than ready. And I feel sorry for my opponent. Well, let's talk about the UK fighters. And you mentioned there that UK, there's, there's been talk about Shannon Courtney. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, well, she lost to Rachel Ball over the, over the, <laughs> Couple of weeks ago. So, have you seen that fight? I must be late in Australia because you're yawning. But did you watch Shannon Courtney? No, no, no. Okay. I was yawning about Shannon Courtney. Oh, were you? Sorry, sorry. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch? Did you watch that fight? Did you watch Rachel Bourne and Shannon Courtney? Yeah. What your thoughts on the fight? Did I you do. think Rachel won, or do you think Shannon won? What, what was your thoughts? No, I do think. Um, I do think Rachel won. Um, I think it was at the best. I saw it as a tie, and because of the knockdown, you know that edges that edges Rachel for the win. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't really give um, Shannon more than four rounds. Um, and I'm, you know, when I'm watching boxing and I'm analyzing boxing, I'm non-biased. Um, yeah, I just, um, I thought it was a great fight. I thought it was really exciting. I thought Shannon showed some really good stuff. I was like, okay, wow, you know, like she, she looks good. Um, you know, um, I think there's obviously, you know, things that you, you can work on. Um, you saw, I saw a lot of weaknesses as well. Same with Ra Rachel, you know, I knew Rachel. I've been watching Rachel for a while. I mean, Rachel been talking about friends for a while mm -hmm. on social media. So um, I already knew kind of a, a lot about Rachel and how she fought, um, seen her fights. And she didn't really change too much, you know, that's that's her style. But I haven't really seen, seen bits and pieces of Shannon against like lower level opponents. So to see her at a high level opponent and to, you know, um, bring her bar up was good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was impressed. I thought it was a great fight. You know, I'd watch it again. Um, just for the fact, I thought it was a good fight. It was action packed. It was, you know, Shannon did really good getting up off the ground, and I uh, showed a lot of heart coming back from that. Um, yeah, and Rachel, yeah, good. You know, I thought it was a good fight. Thing is as well, I think the Shannon Courtney fight with yourself was talked about quite a lot. You even what wanted the fight, um, and it, for us, it's two two good fighters in yourself and Shannon going at it. But unfortunately, Shannon lost. So. You coming to the UK, it could be you, Rachel Ball, you, Shannon Corner. Like you said, there is good names. And what Eddie Hearn is doing right now with women's boxing, we had yeah. Terry Harper and Tasha Jonas, which is a great fight. Then we had yeah. Shannon Corte and Rachel Ball, which is another great fight. So women's boxing right now is, is going up and up and up. The trajectory it the, is. The talent is good. The fights are good. I mean, you yeah. must be excited 
to be a part of that right now. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, I feel like I'm not, I, I'm a bit left out over here in Australia. Um, like, I just <laughs> want to get over there. But um, no, it is, it is exciting. And um, it's, you know, I, I just can't wait for COVID to finish so I can literally get my ass to the UK and, um, and you know, like, go around there and just see, um, see what's up over there, you know? Um, yeah. I you've mean, got both a lot of those fans now, like, though, Ebony. You've got a lot of fans. I do, yeah. You've got a lot and of fans. I, I'll be following you on Twitter, too. They yeah, love, yeah but I know, there. like, yeah, um, the, the fan base is growing exponentially. Like, every week it's another thousand or more, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I just every, every day is a couple of hundred. Um, and, I mean, I think people are really starting to see what I'm about now. Because at first it was like, you don't really know. The first couple of months of me being on Twitter, you didn't really know me. Like, you just like, okay, you see the boxing, you see the banter, you see the looks. But I think people are right and see, like, the kind of personality I am. And, um, yeah, they, you know, like, I... And then obviously I love boxing and I think it's just seems, I seem to gel well with the, with the Brits. So, and the Americans too, you know, like, um, I get a lot, really a lot along with Americans. I, I had a bigger American fan base, um, before Twitter because, um, I, I attacked the American fan base last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. I, I love them. I love them more. It's, it's awesome. And I think it's going to be amazing when I come over there. I expect everyone to show up at the airport when I rock up with like blonde bomber signs. Like, I mean, are you really... Are is you, it Legion United? Wait, wait, wait. Is it Legion United fans? What's happening with the team? What team does they, it uh, You know what? I, 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 haven't picked, I haven't officially picked a team. I even said it on my post. I said, look, I'm definitely leaning towards Leeds. Leeds have a place in my heart because they're actually the fans, they're brilliant. Like, I mean, oh, I, I, I know I should say that, but they are like, I mean, I had my poll, I think there was like 8,000 votes and like six and a half of them were... Six and a half thousand were Leeds fans. Like, yeah. does that doesn't show me that Leeds believe in their team and they have good fans? I don't know what does. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's pretty. Um, I, I did say that I want to come to one of the games, and that will solidify it for me because you can't. I mean, you can't really pick a team like that. You can't. Like, I mean, I can, but I would like to rock up to the to the game. But because I've already kind of got that little soft spot in my heart for Leeds, and and Leeds is actually a big a, a big kind of club for Australia. Like when I was growing up, Leeds was like, you know, the team that everyone loved. And we were talking like in the, you know, early 2000s and stuff like that. So, um, it does have a soft spot, but then, you know, I, I want to get over there and I want to get to all the games. And, um, I do hear that Leeds is playing Liverpool, um, their first game. So maybe, Hey, I might watch that and, and, and make my mind up or, or whatever. We'll see. Has anyone sent you a Leeds scarf yet? A Leeds hat? Has anyone sent you any stuff? Oh, they ask, yeah, they're, they're sending me in the uh, inbox is telling me that they will. Um, I've had plenty of offers, people sending me jerseys and, and, and scarves. Like, it's, it's honestly, it's brilliant. I haven't, I don't know what to say. Like, yeah, okay, cool, send it. I, feel, I don't know. Like, that means that I'm like solidifying it. You know what I mean? I don't want to let everyone down, like other people. So I'm kind of trying to tread lightly to yeah, really. Yeah. Make the smart decision, you know, because um. But then they they tagged me in the um Josh Warrington videos of the, and I was like, fuck, like, imagine this, like, imagine, like it's just ridiculous, like the. You that, get that a Josh Warrington undercard. Imagine, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to hit, look that shit up, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, but then, but then, what about when I go to like you know other places or whatever? Oh, you'll be hated. You'll be hated. You'll be hated. I know. Liverpool, Manchester. I know. I don't really. Want, I know. I don't really want that because, like, I, I know what the... Well, I mean, I didn't really know how serious I were about that football mm -hmm. until I made that, that post, that joke post, but it seemed like I could get, like, haters just for the football team that I like. So I'm trying to tread lightly and play, make it all very uh, light, you know, banter. But, um, yeah, I think um, I might have, like, a secret spot, a soft spot for, for Leeds now. But, um, no, nah, it's good, you know. Um, you know, in Australia... We, we did pool crowds like that. I mean, like a big main event card in Australia gets, you know, like four and a half thousand or five thousand. Like the Horns of Raffle was like four and a half thousand crowd. Like, I mean, it's yeah. not big, you know what I mean? So, so my dream, you know, especially after seeing the Fury and Wilder fight in, the, in Vegas and seeing how many British fans were there to support Fury, um, I, that's what that's where this all came about. I was like, I want these guys. I, I love this fan. Look at it. It's, it's, it's incredible. Mm. Um, and it's not... It's um, what do you call it? It's lived up to its hype. Yeah, that, uh, honestly, it's awesome. So well, going back to the boxing, then I mean, you should, by the way, on a side note, you should pick a Scottish team. By the way, uh, Scottish, you should pick a, I'll, I'll someone's you a, saying that. Yeah, you should pick a Scottish team. I won't say which one, but 
I'll, 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 because you might get hated. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get hated. So I'll text you on Twitter. I'll text you on Twitter what team to support in Scotland. I said, wait, I did say, I mean, I tried to pick four teams to follow, but they just won't have it. No, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. Women, yeah. <laughs> women's boxing again is, is, is on Saturday night. Katie Taylor, the rematch against yeah. the soon. For you, as a boxing fan, as a fighter, I mean, you've been in the sport, you were a ring card girl, you've been in the sport, you've nearly yeah. been in the sport, really. Yeah. How do you see that fight going? And what does Katie Taylor have to change to get the definitive win, the decisive win this time around for you? Oh, what does Katie, Katie Taylor have to just box yeah. smart? Yeah, like, I mean, it's, to be honest, like, looking at it from the outside in, it's a very easy, it's a very easy game plan that she needs to follow. Like, very simple. You know, but whether or not you can do that when you're in the ring, it's, it's that's, that's the that's the story. You know, like we all know that what Pearson's like, and she's going to come in, you know, balls blazing and trying to, you know, you know, we call it bum rush, um, Katie, and with Katie's skill, she would be smarter to just outbox, you know, no more than three punches in a row, move, jab, move, jab, move, keep her, out, you know, keep her out, you know, use those angles, don't let it, don't let Pearson plant her feet you know, um, and just pretty much be on the back foot, you know, and just, yeah, hook, you know, hooking off and then coming on second phase and then out, come in, plant, get back out, plant, get back out, you know, move, angle. Um, she just needs to box like that, I think, and that's, that's, she could, she could, box, like how she did with Christina Lindau, mm. you know what I mean? Um, she, she literally, like, outboxed, like, really outboxed Christina, um, I wasn't even close in my eyes. Um, and Christine is not as like, as like relentless and fast kind of as um, P soon. Like she's very forward pressing, she's very strong and she's like riding on there, but she doesn't throw as much punches in bunches as P soon. So, I mean, but it's a similar game plan, I would think. And I think that's why they were smart to take that fight before the, before this P soon rematch to get another kind of, you know, a bit of a bully, a bully opponent to practice that kind of smart, game plan which she did it she executed beautifully with Christina so does Katie win it for you then yeah I think Katie wins it yeah and I don't see any knockouts or anything like that not from Katie I mean anyway I feel like the only way the PC is going to win is with a knockout um and she's looking very strong to be honest and um you know kind of I don't know if they're heavier but yeah she's looking she's looking stronger for sure um I don't count PC now I still think you know she can make it a really rough night I think if PC wants to win she's going to need to make it really ugly like really ugly. Again, I, like I said to you, like women's box. I think Eddie Hearn, he said, in, I seen an interview a couple of weeks, was it last week or something like that? He said there isn't men's boxing anymore. There isn't women's because women have proved now that they can fight. So there isn't men's boxing or women's boxing. It's just boxing. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that it's, women should just be categorized as boxing now in terms of it's just because, like, like <laughs> women's boxing, you've got the two minute, are you an advocate as well for the three minute rounds rather than two minute rounds and stuff like that? Like, how do, you, I think, how do you find women's boxing at the moment? You know what? I, I, I honestly think I'm probably uh, I'm probably the one that's, that's, that's going against the grain with all of this. Um, because I get, like, it is boxing. We're all boxing. But I don't, I don't see the problem with calling it women's boxing. Mm -hmm. We're women. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Like, it's, it's women. We're women. Like, embrace that. Be proud to be a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we're not men it's women's boxing and, and, and women's boxing is great. Like it's, and just like it's women's football or women's rugby or women's basketball. Like there's nothing wrong with it, with it being called women. Like we're women. Like I don't see what, I, I just don't understand the, the fuss about that. Um, I think although how the WBC changed the belt to just world champion now instead of women's world champion, I think that's, that's not, not a problem. Mm -hmm. But to be talking in conversation, and having to call it, you need to just yes. change. To, to, what's the word? To, to, whatever. Decide, right. Not decide. Yeah, yeah you need yeah. to. I'm, I'm, I'm a math teacher, not an English I, teacher. But yeah, you need to make it different. Like, I mean, because it is. You can't be talking like, you, you won't, like, if you're talking about boxing, I mean, and you're talking about women, you know it's, it's girls, mm. you know. But when you're talking about it like this, you're not going to go, oh, boxing's doing really great right now. Mm. Okay what women's boxing or male like it's it's both both are doing great right you know <laughs> they are doing great but but do you know what i mean like yeah, i mean you need to it's, differentiate it's, between the two sports because it is two sports I, like you say you've got the men's and the women's and stuff like that yeah i mean i mean you know it's 
and I don't think I just I don't think there's a problem with it with being uh, calling it women's boxing like you know we're women like why should we lose that why should we lose our label mm. as well I don't know but you know I'm a, I'm different to a lot of people a lot of a lot of women are different to that but that's my personal opinion I love being a woman I love embracing being being feminine and and my femininity and representing women and that's why I don't have a problem calling it women's boxing because I think um, you know, especially how it's all going now, we should be proud that it's of women's boxing, not of boxing, uh-huh. of women's boxing. Exactly. You well, know I, what I, mean? I want to talk about that, Emily, if you don't mind, because you do bring that femininity to to boxing yeah. and your sexuality. If you don't mind me saying, you bring yeah. that sort of your looks and the. We've all seen the Wayne videos now and your bikini and stuff like that. Uh, but everyone wears lingerie. I just got big boots. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. But how, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, wait, like how, always... Push back on that a little bit. Do you get pushed back on that using your sexuality and your femininity when it comes to? Yeah, a, a, a little bit. But I mean, you get pushed back on no matter what. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like Shannon Courtney wears, you know, ugly undies, and she with like it's all stretched, looks like her dad's dad's undies because they're too big for her, and she gets pushed back on that as well. People give a shit because she she's wearing ugly pants. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I get shit because I'm wearing sexy stuff. Like, it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to get pushed back. Like, it doesn't matter. You know, so, you know, what's that? Eva, Eva um, Brokovich wears some crazy shit as well. You know, everyone's going to put shit on everyone. I just think that, you know what, I'm not even trying. I'm literally just wearing my underwear. So un- underwear that I like to wear, I'm not going to go spend money on, like, a shitty pair of underpants that I'm not going to want to wear again. Like, why, when i got nice sets of lingerie in my cupboard? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even trying. I can't help it that i got, like, that i got mad boobs and a good body. And that I put hard work into my body and I look I actually look good at weights because I don't deplete myself and starve myself and, you know, kill myself to make weight. So I look good, I look fit, I look healthy, and I think that's how you should look. You know, I don't think it's a good look when you're drained and gaunt and looking all, looking like shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's it. It's just... um People may be not used to it because, you know, there's this stigma on women's boxing, you know, that women shouldn't, you know, that women aren't, women boxers aren't attractive and they look like men or that, whatever. There's this stigma and, and a stereotype that's been around for a long time. And I'm happy to break that and show that, you know, guess what? We don't all look like that and we actually can be feminine. And what's wrong with being like, you know, what's wrong with being sexy and being an athlete? I don't see what the problem with it is. Like, why should we take away our femininity? Why should we downplay it? I mean, I didn't even upplay it. I literally just fucking wear my underwear like everyone else. You know what I mean? My underwear just happens to look better. Like, I just don't look like a fucking monster out of Cloverfield. Like, sorry. You know what I mean? I look good in it. <laughs> and that's what they're, what, are they jealous of that? That I don't look like, like, trash? Sorry, I look good. <laughs> you know, like, that's fuck. Like, what do you want me to do? Wear a fucking paper bag or, like, a fucking garbage bag to the weigh You want me to wear, like, overalls or, like, something? Uh, like, what the fuck? Like, what do you want me to wear? Like, It's the pushback, but then you must get the, the people, the, oh, the yeah. men have messaged you and be like, thumbs up to yeah. that. Well done. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> Next time, turn around. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. It's fine. I'll turn around next time. Don't worry, guys. Yeah, no, we'll... but I um, yeah, I do a little pirouette. Yeah, yeah. You know, do a little like curtsy and shit, you know. But um, no. Yeah, yeah. So, if you do that next win, that's all down at this interview. I'll be watching out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, I um, no, but I mean, it's it's not a problem. I mean, even in my my posts, you know, you see me on Instagram, Twitter, I don't actually wear anything revealing. It's fucking winter here. I'm always covered up. Like, can I, I can't help it that I, I, I'm covered up. Like, I can't help it. You know what I mean? Like, what do you want me to do? Cut them off? Like, <laughs> you guys should be all happy. Like, I mean, I've got a one and a half kilo weight disadvantage because of this chest. Like, I mean, what are you all whinging about? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But it's 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 true. Like, um, I I can't help that I look good in my tights. I don't even wear shorts. I, you know, I don't I don't even wear crop tops. I'm literally in tights and jumpers. Like, I mean. It's my, it's my face, like, do I need to put a, you know, I don't know, mask over my face? Like, I, people just, um, I, I'm not even really trying, you know. If anything, I think it's also the banter. Obviously, I like to have a laugh with the boys and a banter. So maybe it's, um, they just take my banter because it sometimes can be a bit sexual innuendo because that's just how I am. I just yeah. think it's funny. Um, and they just see that as bad. But, you know, I've always been one of the boys. I have um, Grew up around boys, you know, I was a mechanic, I did bodybuilding and boxing. It's all boys. There's all boys everywhere. 
So um, it's just how I've been molded and, and grown up. So, um, you know, and they love it. And I love it. It's funny. It makes my day. I have a laugh and um, maybe they're just jealous that, I, that I'm just, my fans are just um, exponentially growing because of who I am and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, you, you know? That's the best way but to like, do it. That's the best way to do yeah, it. Yeah, like, honest. I mean, I'm just, being, I'm just being me, not giving a fuck, swearing, you know, whatever. And, um, and I get along with all the boys. So, and I, you know what? Boxing is 90% men. Even, you know, even still now, the, 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 fe the female side is still very small. So, um, if I'm getting along with most of the fans, then I'm happy. Happy days, putting bums on seats, putting bums at the weigh-ins. That's, that's what it means. Money, <laughs> money, money. Hey. See, smart girl, smart girl. I'm going hey, to hey. I'm, I'm gonna just, change the script. I'm going to change the not script. Just the, yeah. Are they going to the see there? Not just the pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're a master. Not just the pretty, but I'm a master teacher, yeah. Yeah, mechanic, master, no, I'm a, I'm girl, bodybuilder, boxer. I mean, what are you going to do when you retire from boxing? Sorry, when I retire from boxing? Wait, I said you've been a math teacher, mechanic, ring card girl, bodybuilder, boxer. What's next? Next? Ah. Well, I would love to get into commentary. Um, you know, like, as you, you can... You, you, I'm good on the camera. I mean, I love boxing. I analyse it. I'm really good at breaking fights down and fighters down. I'd love to do something like that in boxing. Um, but also, obviously, being a math teacher, I love my job. I love being a teacher. I love being a math teacher. I absolutely love having um, an effect and being able to touch the lives of the youth and, and spread, um, you know, inspire inspire kids at a young age and start them kind of getting their head at a young age about self-belief and um, putting in effort and, you know, the possibilities of success. Like, I like doing that from a young age and getting people to believe in themselves and, and embrace who they are. Um, so I love that about about teaching and that's why I became a teacher and I happened to just be really good at math. So of course I chose maths as my subject. Um, but in my math classrooms, it's a lot to do with, um, you know, it's all, it's a lot of life skills, you know, everything that we do in class and um, the way I teach my kids and the speech, you know, I call, we call them, they call them motivation speeches. Miss, is this another inspiration, motivation? I speak, I get this shit, sit down and shut up. Don't talk about talking. <laughs> No. None of the Listen. kids give you shit. None of the kids give you no. shit. No, oh, yeah. how funny is this, right? One of my boys, like one, uh, like a, uh, one of the seniors, so you twelve kids, so he's seventeen, just started boxing in this gym, and he, I saw him on Friday, and he told me, "Oh, Miss, have you heard of this gym?" I'm like, "Yeah." Oh, well, yeah, I haven't been there for a while, right? Randomly, I get a call from my trainer, and he's like, "Hey, you want to go down to this gym for sparring?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, cool." And I get there, and I go to the coach, and I go, "Hey, you know, one of my one of my students said he trains here." Next minute, he walked through the door. And today, like, I mean, he's so funny. I was like saying, I go, oh, he comes with a sparring, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, oh, yeah, right. But he didn't. But I, I, I was in there and I, I was on fire today. My sparring, man, like, I can't even explain to you, put in words. Like, today was like just, I was on fire. And his dad was watching. And um, we got out of the ring. His dad's like, I bet you, I bet you he's never going to be bad in class ever again. <laughs> exactly. I don't think any of your Never. Do. Never. I'm like, I hope you better tell all the kids too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I was, I was making a joke to him, and I'm like, hey, I go, you next. I go, let's go, you want to spar? <laughs> you should have took him in. That would have been funny. I would have. I would have. No, he's a big. He's a rugby player. He's, right, he's a big, big, boy. big rugby player boy. Yeah, yeah. I'd, you know, still chat up a little. Exactly. Bit. <laughs> you to look that ass. Right. I'm gonna have to change the script here quickly. No worries. You said there that you like you can analyze fights and stuff. Uh, big fight this weekend as well. Uh, uh, Dillian White and Povetkin, two big left hooks yes. in the heavyweight division. Yes. Break, break down that fight for me, please, Ebony. Okay. I see um, I see Dillian wanting to show off his boxing, to be honest. And I think that he's going to try and stay kind of like, you know, that, like a, a bit of a, a longer a longer to mid-range kind of fight. He's using his jab a lot more. I reckon we're going to see a lot more of his jab in this fight. Um, try and neutralize um, Povetkin coming in. Um, and... Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think, I think, you know what's interesting, uh, you know, with the no crowds, I'd be interested to see how, you know, someone like Dillian um, goes with that because, you know, the crowds do you up, especially for him who likes to get into a bit of a, you know, like a, a fight, mm. you know, when you're in there and like the crowd's going crazy, like he just let his hands go, like, you know, it'll be interesting to see how, how he handles that and if he does, you know, um, just go hard at it you know, like a Chisora kind of fight, you know, but I don't see that happening. I think he's going to want to show um, his boxing skills. I want to be pretty disciplined with the fight. Um, and yeah, um, Provodkin, uh, Provodkin, I think he's going to, 
do what he does, man. Just come in, put the pressure, come in with that head movement, try and do those sneaky short right, uh, short right, short lefts, um, go to the body. They're about, they're about similar height, actually. It's not much. Yeah, there's not much um, height difference. I actually thought that um, that Dillian was going to be was a bit more rangy, but I think Dillian does have longer arms. He's quite lanky, like he's got lanky arms compared to um, Vivekan. So I think um, I think he's still going to be able to use that jab um, a lot. And um, yeah, straight one twos. You know, um, I I would like to see. I, I I think it could be a later round knockout for Dillian too. I think it could knock out. Um, Provet Ken in the later rounds, eight, nine, ten. Mm. I think. Is this, is this a I think. Whoever lands that left hook first, is it one of them? I think. I think so. Um, I think so. I mean, I will say that it's going to be a left hook, but at the same time, um, you can't count out their other punches. You know, mm. um, I I think that because there's so much focus on these left hooks, both of them are going to be training. You know, mm. they're going to be they're going to be doing these ones. You know, catching it. You know. Yeah, they're going to catch him. Maybe one throws that catch and then the other one gops, gops him with it. You know, who knows? So um, I think it's going to be a really exciting fight. I'm really uh, excited. To, Dillian's one of my faves. Uh, um, it's personality-wise too. Um, you know, keeps it pretty real. And I'm I'm happy to see him back in there after everything that he went through last year and like that his last kind of shitty fight, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I think he deserves a good fight. He deserves a shot. I hope he wins because I really want to see him fight for that title belt. But, um, yeah, I mean... Um, I think that also you never know if uh, I always going to say Pravetkin. Pr- 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 well, I think Pravet. I always going to say I love him too, but yeah. I always going to yeah. Um, Pravetkin. I think you know, a fighters. I was saying this before. Fighters can age like that overnight. It's been a long time. It's been quite a while out of the ring. He is. He is older. Mm. Um, not saying that that's going to happen because we have seen you know obviously heavyweights fight a lot longer. But you never know. It depends on how he comes in. But Dillian's very fresh, very young still. And he looks like he's in his best shape. He looks like he's been in a really good mindset. He's training out of um, Portugal, no distractions. I think he's, um, yeah, I think we're going to see a really, really good Dillian White. So, yeah, exciting stuff. Definitely. I'm looking forward to the fights tonight, tomorrow morning for you. Um, yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you one of them guys? Because when we watch Vegas fights, we have to get up at four in the morning to watch the Vegas fights. Are you, are you, are you like that? Do you get up really early to watch the fights? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get up at 4 a.m. Your fights, the, the, the British fights start at four. But Sundays has been crazy the last couple of weeks, before, well, my Sundays, because I get up at four and I watch the match room fights. And then like I'll have two hours break and then it's like the showtime fights in, the, in, in, in America. You know what I mean? So it's like I have it's literally boxing all day because for us, um, the, the American Sunday. fights it's the best Sunday. For us, American fights start at eleven and finish around three. It can be like eleven, twelve noon, depending mm-hmm. on it's like the you know, which coast. But um yeah, eleven to twelve and then they usually go to about three, three thirty. So like we have like a lunchtime daytime sport thing, like it's pretty sick. But with obviously the um matchroom cards, I've got the morning as well. Might have a little nap in between, who knows? But um nah I'm usually pretty hyped. So nah it's good. I am loving the Sundays lately. Definitely. It sounds like a perfect Sunday to me. It's yeah, so I've, good. I've enjoyed my my chat with you. Is there anything you'd like to add? I mean, like I said, you've got your, your fan base in the UK is growing and yeah you with your, your your Twitter interaction and stuff like that. But is there anything you'd like to add for anyone in the UK? Oh, man, just, you know what? They all know I love them. I'm always showing love to my fans and I continue to show love to my fans. Um, you know, um, I'm, I'm always been really down to earth. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, when anyone has time for me, I give time to them. You know, I get so, so many beautiful um, DMs and I'm not like sleazy DMs, like some really nice, you know, real support, um, you know, and just um, appreciating who I am and stuff. And I just, you know, I appreciate that so much because um, sometimes, you know, you can you can hear some stuff and it's nice to know that, you know, there's good people out there. And, um, yeah, you know, my, 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 my 69 group, they know they know who they are. They know that they're in my special group and um, they That's always support me. Wait, 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 stop. What's the 69 group? What's that? <laughs> you don't know my 69 group? No. What is that? Well, only, I only follow 69 people. I'm one of them. I think. Yeah, you're one of them. Yeah, I'm going to check this now. Wait there. Oh shit! I, I might have. I, I think oh wait, you did. Well, you're I might have. Well, you do. I'm, I'm in the group. You're, yeah, you're one of the guys. You're, you're one of the sixty-nine. I'm one of the guys. So, yeah, yeah, you're one of the guys. No, but yeah, the six, the sixty-nine group, like literally, is like you know, um, 
the people that I really respect mm. and that I appreciate their page and their support. Um, I like what they're about. Um, you know, not of many people, they're not many of them are like a famous people. Like I, the real people, um, real support fans, like OGs from the start, like you, you've followed me from the start, you yeah. know? So, um, you know, none of this kind of like jumping on the wagon, you know, now that I'm getting popular, like people that can banter with me and um, have my back and um, yeah, they know who they are. And they also know that if they don't, keep up the scratch like you know they, they can get flicked for a new newbie so oh, i've had a few oh, i see so yeah. i'm gonna have to stay on, yeah. to stay on my toes in you gotta, you gotta stay you gotta stay on your game i've already right. flicked you know i've already flicked eddie Hearn. i've flicked mikey <laughs> eddie <laughs> I've already flicked. yeah well i see his shit everywhere anyways he doesn't talk to me so fuck him yeah. um i've got i've flicked um um robert guts the uh i mean heaps of Heaps of like people that I was following at the start that I'm like, you know what, like I, I want real people. I want I want real people. I want to see real people stuff. Um, yeah, and I mean, usually it's like you either have to be like really funny. You got some really funny banter banter people that I follow because we they're solid. But um, yeah, got like Drew, call out like Drews and Mark, Enzo. Oh, like, yeah. We got you know we got a we got a good little crew going. We just rinse it, we rinse each other pretty much. That's but good. um, it's good. No, nah, it's good. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of people like that because I'll, I'll see like my drop it goes drops to sixty eight because maybe someone's just got like I don't know band or something like that. So the spot opens, man, and that's it. And then they all no please, I, I, they're all like, I've noticed you're at sixty eight. Like, can I be your next sixty <laughs> nine? <laughs> And I'm like, well, I, like a, I like that. I like that. It's actually, yeah, I like that a lot. There's, there's, there's such a long list waiting to be my 69. And then I always add someone and I'll get someone DM me and be like, I thought we were next. And I'm like, mate, I'm so sorry, but the line is long. And if you're not fast, <laughs> yeah. Get out. But yeah, no, we do the hashtag 69. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant, man. I need to get on this, man. I can't believe I've not seen this. I know. Now you're you're actually part of the 69. I can't believe I got to unfollow you and then oh, follow you. Oh, yeah, don't I'm, I'm on it now. Look, I'm tweeting right now. Look. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, don't guys, don't give up hope because you know these these guys they might drop their game and you're in. So right. don't give I'm, up hope. I'm, Keeps... I'm up in my game. My game's getting up. Yeah, yeah. Keep supporting me. Keep showing me your love because you might get into the 69 group. And and I'm telling you, everyone that's in the 69 group, when I come to the UK, we're gonna have a party. There we go. There we go. And I'm invited. Hey, you're, you're invited. invited. Yeah, <laughs> you're I'm invited. invited. Yeah. I'm ready to rock and roll. Every, every party needs a Scotsman. Don't worry about that. Every party. Yeah, that's it. I we need one, yeah. Exactly. Um, Ebony, again, enjoyed my interview with you. I like the way you broke down White and Taylor, the Kate Taylor fight. Um, Thanks, yeah. I don't know what time it is in Australia, but you're getting up early tomorrow to watch the fight, so get some sleep. Yeah. What is the time? I don't know. It's What's the time there? Quarter past 11 in the morning. So minus three hours is eight, so it's quarter past eight quarter past in the eight. night time. Right. You yeah. get, you get yeah. a couple hours sleep in you. Enjoy the fights tomorrow. And uh, you predict a Taylor win and a white stoppage in the 10th, the later rounds. Let's see if you're right. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for your time, mate. You're a legend. And it was great yeah. to finally meet you face to face. Definitely. Likewise to you. Thank you so much, Ebony. Stay safe. Stay, mate. Bye. Bye. You too.